The previous video in my five things playlist was five things you should know before you get coaching. And you can see that up here, link is in the text description. And this is a follow on from that. This is five things that you should do to get the most out of your coaching. So if you're interested in those, let's get started. Number one, arrive early. You shouldn't be rushing. This is a learning process. Learning requires a particular state of mind. You mustn't get there late, change really quickly, be checking your mobile phone, rushing into the court, not have time to warm up, uh, heat up, sorry, and, and, and then get on court and say, okay, let's go. No, you can't do that. You must arrive early. You must change, you must heat up properly, you must avoid any distractions. So, you know, turn off your mobile phone if you can for 10 minutes, but you know, as soon as you arrive in the club, turn it off so that you can begin to focus. Think about what it is that you know that you're going to work on or what you've been working on so that you can discuss that with the coach. But arriving late and rushing is not the right frame of mind for learning. Now, you might not think that coaching is learning. You might think, well, it's just about hitting the ball, but your brain is learning. It's learning a new technique or you're learning a new tactic. Now, if it's just fitness work, okay, maybe that's a little bit different. But that's not coaching, that's training. So that's different. So get there early, or at least get there on time, and prepare, avoid any distractions so that your mind is the most receptive, your body is ready to receive the instructions, and then you will get the most from that particular coaching session. Number two. Now, not all coaches will agree with this, but number two is make notes after the session. And your coach will maybe say, oh no, you just need to work on this. And that's fine, you know, do what the coach says. But I recommend making notes. You don't have to have a book and you know, hundreds of notes. You know, you, you can just, you just have like a book and you can have the date and then you make a few notes. And you can note what it is you have to work on. The action of writing something down fixes it in the brain even more. Even if, and I tell my students this, even if you write it down on a piece of paper afterwards and then you throw that piece of paper away, that action helps you remember. But it also means that you've got something to refer to. Depends on what you're working on, but if you're working on technique, maybe there's a couple of things that your coach wants you to remember. Early, early preparation, point of contact needs to be further forward or, or something. Whatever it is that your coach is working on with you, make a note of it after each lesson so that you can refer to it when you do the work afterwards. So that process of having to think about what you've discussed will mean that you get more from the session because you'll be paying more attention. So make notes, short notes, after each coaching session. Number three, schedule time specifically to work on the things that your coach has told you about. Now imagine you go to the coach and the coach says, right, I want you to do this. Now if it's a technical aspect, then that's clear. You need to practice on your own. You need to get on court and you need to work on those things. Maybe it's with a partner and you say to your training partner, look, can we just do some you know, drills or routines for the first half of the, of the, the time? Or can we do it all of the time? We both need to work on, uh, on particular shots or particular aspects. Focus on just improving. Now, if it's a tactical aspect, make sure that when you go on court between your coaching lessons, that you actually say, I'm not going to play to win, I'm going to play to improve. My coach has told me I need to hit a few more straight drives in a rally before I begin to attack. That's your objective, not winning, not playing well, but following the advice of the coach, because in the longer term, that's what will help you. So after you've got your coaching sessions, you need to have specific times to improve. You can't just play as normal and hope to improve. Yes, that will happen. Go to a coach, get a lesson, just play, you will improve. But you will improve faster if you 
book some specific times to improve, depending on what your coach has told you. Now, the number of times between each lesson depends on your standard, depends on your budget, depends on what you're trying to achieve. But I would say at least a couple of practices before you go back for another lesson. But again, talk to your coach. Maybe he's happy or she's happy to coach you every time without any other practice. Depends on what you're working on. But if you can practice outside, you'll get more benefit from those coaching lessons in general. Number four, if you'd watched the things you should know before you get coaching, you'll know one of the things I talked about was it's a process. You have to communicate. And for number four, don't be afraid to ask questions. Too often I've seen pupils have doubt in their mind and I say, do you have a question? No, 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 come on, come on. Oh, well, I was wondering. Don't be afraid. It is not a sign of ignorance. Well, it is, but that shouldn't be a bad thing. You shouldn't be embarrassed about not knowing something. There's many things I'm ignorant about and I do not hesitate to ask because the best way to learn is to ask. Well, not the best way, but a great way to learn is to ask. So when you're on court, if you don't understand something, don't just keep doing it or trying. Ask a clarifying question. Ask the coach, what is it that you want me to do? Am I supposed to be doing it this way? When should I? There's a thousand different questions, but don't think that you just absorb. You need to ask questions as well so that the coach knows what you don't understand, knows what areas you have doubts about. So get on court, Listen to the coach, process the information, but ask questions as well. You'll get more from that coaching session if you do that. And the fifth one is commit to improving. Now that might sound obvious. Well, I'm going to a coach, I'm paying money, I'm giving my time, obviously I'm committing, but are you? There's a difference between actually just going somewhere and going through the motions than actually saying, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, whatever my goal is, I'm going to commit to doing the work. I'm going to commit to listening to my coach and giving my coach enough time to show improvement. I'm not saying that you have to stay with the same coach forever because clearly that's not right. I'm not saying that you have to work with a coach that you don't like because that's not right. What I'm saying is that when you go, don't just say to yourself, I'm going to have one lesson, see what happens. Well, okay, maybe you can have a couple of lessons to see whether you like the coach, but at some point you've got to say, I'm going to do this. I want to improve. I know what I need to do and I'm going to do it. And you need to have that mentality of taking it seriously. Don't just go and just see what happens. Go with a clear intention of improving and committing time and effort into improving because rarely does improvement come just from doing things without thinking. Sometimes, but not very often. You want to get the most from coaching, go with the right frame of mind. Well, there you have my five things for getting the most out of a coaching session. If you have coaching or you've had coaching and you've got some others to add, add them in the comments and then other viewers can benefit from them. And if you've got any questions about, you know, when you're having coaching, please ask and I'll do my best to answer them. On the screen at the moment is a subscription button. If you think my content is useful, please consider subscribing. There's also a playlist of other five things videos and another video that YouTube thinks is a really good fit for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.